Then Lycon tried to answer, but all he could utter was the howl of a wolf. He tried to fall upon his knees, only to find that he was already on all fours. So he fled away into the forests of Arcadia, with his sons behind him, a wolf at the head of his pack. Zeus restored Nectimus to life, and bade him rule justly and well. Then he and Hermes once more in disguise continued on their way. You see, said Zeus presently, men are as wicked as I thought. Is there need of further search? Remember your promise, answered Hermes, and this time let us seek hospitality of a poor man. Perhaps we may find a virtue among the humble, which is lacking to a king such as Lycon. So they went on across the world, passing at realm over sea and land, and came in the evening to a mountain top near Tyana in Phrygia. Here stood a little cottage, thatched with straw, and the walls made of reeds and clay. There were no servants in this house. Indeed, its only inhabitants were an old man and his wife, whose names were Philemon and Baucis. Poor though they were, these two welcomed the travelers kindly, made up the fire with their last dry faggot, put on the pot to boil, and cut up their only joint of smoked bacon which hung from the beam. They prepared a bed for their guests, the only bed in the house, and heaped all the rugs they possessed upon it. Then they laid the table, and set the supper before the two strangers. Besides the meat, there were olives and cheese, eggs roasted in the warm embers, and what little store they had of dried figs, dates, and nuts. Old Baucis, her hands trembling with age, served the meal while Philemon placed two wooden cups upon the table, and poured into them wine from the only jar that remained to him.